Uh, howdy. Quick build showcase concept. This is the equivalent of just, like, dirty napkin paper. So, Relic of the Pact. You know it. You love it. Uh, basically, you deal a crazy ton of more damage based off how much health you have. So, I have 8.4k uh, HP. Uh, but... The interesting part is, A, how I got here, and B, I'm not doing physical damage exactly. <laughs> so, Light Poacher was changed, so it's gained 5% of Fizz as extra uh, extra damage of each element per spirit charge. So that's uh, Cold, Lightning, and Fire. If it's Chaos, yell at me in the comments. So, uh, this particular build has 20 Abyss Jewels. So that gives us 100% of Fizz as extra fire, cold, lightning. It's great. So, uh, the follow-up, though, is how do we get any of our life? And the answer is Shroud of the Lightless. Uh, Shroud of the Lightless gives you 3% max life per abyss jewel f affecting you. So 3% times 20 is 60% increased max life. Pretty good right there. Uh, also... Abyss Jewels themselves can roll uh, Strength and Life, and uh, Life is an imp prefix that you get at uh, eye level 82, and Strength you can literally get at any point, you just have to get lucky. So the dirtiest version of this build, <laughs> you know, is basically just rolling any Abyss Jewel and trying to get tier 1 life and uh, tier 1 strength. Anything else after that is just an addition, or basically just a cute little bonus. Uh, for one reason, Relic of the Pact's Blood Sacrament basically, I believe it has a 3% uh, damage effectiveness multiplier. So you need 100 minimum hit damage to get 3 added damage on the min hit so real bad don't please don't scale it that way <laughs> you're welcome to try but i'm not doing that oh and most importantly the or the third line at the or the final line at the bottom uh penetrates four percent le resist per abyss jewel affecting you because we have 20 abyss jewels obviously that's i think yeah that's 80 uh elemental penetration so that solves basically trying to actually penetrate people's elemental resists. Uh, I picked a Scion because obviously the Scion gets to hang out near uh, three jewel sockets and then the inner ring jewel sockets. Again, this is dirty napkin paper. Please don't judge it too harshly. <laughs> uh, there's so much more room to make this better. Oh! Very important, Dissolution of the Flesh, uh, Flesh, Flesh, 23% more maximum life, uh, maximum 30%, minimum 20, uh, that's super necessary on this build because the way the DR works with how Dissolution of the Flesh works, where basically if you get hit, uh, it comes off the top of your life and it lets you basically just ignore life as the actual thing that kills you. Uh, the problem is, if you get your life down, or if you get all your life reserved, and then somebody hits you, they will kill you. Uh, pretty much instantaneously. Uh, I'm doing the rare ring version, where basically, uh, I have life tap support, arrogance, uh, second wind, and then 10% life recover or life reservation of skills. Not necessary, <laughs> but it gets us to 24%. Which basically means I get, you know, four stacks, and I can reserve almost all my life. Uh, not, there's like 400 missing, but that's okay. Wrath, Piths, Globe, man. 5% increased spell damage and crit strike per 100 life, so, you know, that's, that's really good. <laughs> that's really good damage. Uh, Blood Sacrament's effect is a more multiplier, so you want increased damage wherever you can get it to basically you know, balance the equation. Uh, I don't need a life flask or a mana flask because none of that matters. Uh, Darkness Enthroned, I think, is one of the better ones because the increased effect. <laughs> you get that. You get a 40 life 
max strength roll thing, you get the most amount of like life and strength you can out of it. Uh, anyway, that's uh, that's the concept for the build. Uh, I recommend it. I'm gonna cut to future me where I'm playing the build in front of you. But yeah, uh, check this out. Try it out. It's not very expensive. It's like like probably three divines, I think. This is like really overestimating. This is like three divines because you have to get Shroud of Lightless, which is like 50c, Light Poacher, which is like 50c, Tomb Fist, Tomb Fist and Bluebonic Trail, 50c kind of thing. Like, it's a bunch of medium level purchases that just really start adding up <laughs> towards the end. And then, uh, of course, you need Relic of the Pack, which I think is like 50. It's on the down slope. Uh, also, tat or Tattoos of the Oak. Uh, these things are like 30 to 40 C, I think. They get more expensive over time. But those ones, you, uh, yeah, you just slap those on your build or whatever, and you just do crazy damage. Uh, a lot of the problem with this build is that it's ripped from a previous guy. Anyway. Yeah, this doesn't matter. There's no, there's no real, like, increased life thing. Inquisitor's about the most amount of damage you can get, because, uh, nearby enemies take more damage, but... I have Jug because I just don't like getting stunned.